Relating fractions to decimals. All fractions can be represented as decimals because both of them are a way to represent part of a whole. So we're going to go through six common fractions and their equivalent decimals, um, but by the end you should be able to know how to um, translate any fraction into a decimal, not just these six. So let's start with the, the easiest one. One half, its equivalent decimal is five tenths. For each decimal, for each fraction, I'm going to give you a, um, a strategy, something to think about so that you don't have to just memorize them. So for one half, let's think about money. Two people, if two people share one dollar, then each person will get fifty cents. And we know that fifty hundredths, you can just take away the zero, is the same as five tenths. So looking at that at a um, 100 grid or, a, or base 10 blocks, um, we can see that if we divide the flat in half, we would have 5 tenths or 5 rods on this side. So 1 half of the 100 grid would be 5 tenths. For each of these fractions, I'm also going to show you how to use this equivalency to solve, to figure out how much other fractions are worth. So for example here, 3 and 1 half would be the same as three dollars and a half of a dollar or three and five tenths. Five halves would be the same as five of fifty cents, five times five tenths, which would give you two and five tenths. The next one to think about is the one fourth fraction, which is equal to twenty five hundredths. Again, let's think about money. Think about one person, um, I mean one dollar split among four people. And if we take a dollar and split it into four people, each person is going to get 25 cents or 25 hundredths. Here it is in the um, base 10 blocks in the 100 grid. You can see that the, the square has been divided into four sections, one, two, three, four. And if one of those is colored in, then it's 25 small boxes, see, five times five, which is 25 hundredths. Here, let's think of some other fractions that would have fourth, that would be broken into fourths. Three fourths is like three quarters, or 75 cents. This is going to be one that's worth memorizing because you're going to see it so often. One and one fourth is like a dollar and 25 cents, which is one and 25 hundredths. And you might even see an improper fraction, nine fourths, which would be nine quarters. If I, if I had to do mental math and think about this in my head, I know that eight quarters is two dollars. So that would be, give us two dollars and we'd have one quarter left over because we have nine, two dollars and 25 cents or two and 25 hundredths. The next one is eighths. One eighth is equal to zero and 125 thousandths. Again, the best way I think to think about this is money. Um, think about half of a quarter. Now, I know that's not a real amount, but um, it's the closest way to think about, the easiest way for me to think about. Um, first of all, you have to know that one eighth is half of one fourth. Here is, well, here is one fourth, and one eighth is half of that, so one eighth would be half of a quarter. So we're, if I take this quarter here and break it into two pieces, first I would give each person ten cents, and then I would have five pennies left over. So I'd give each person two pennies, and then I'd have one penny left over. And so it's like you'd have to think about splitting it in half. So if you split a quarter in half, each person would get twelve and a half cents, which here's the twelve cents, and we would show the half of a penny in the thousandths place. So looking at this grid, you have to think about it be this um, whole hundred square, the flat, being broken up into eight pieces. So this would be one piece, the next eighth would be here, two more eighths. So we if we divided this whole thing into eight pieces, this is how much of it would be colored in. Here are the um, 10, 11, 12 hundredths, and then there are the five thousandths that come right here. So if we think about three eighths, we would do three times this amount, this might be amount for one eighth, and get zero and three hundred seventy five thousandths. Seven eighths, we would do the same thing, multiply seven times the amount for one eighth, and we would get zero and eight hundred seventy five thousandths. 
one and one eighth would be like a dollar and a half of a quarter, which would be one and one hundred one and one hundred twenty five thousandths. The next one is one tenth, and it's equal to the decimal one tenth. Um, this one is sort of an obvious one. The easiest way that I know is to just read it out loud. Um, you can also, and by that I mean that one-tenth the fraction, you read the same as a decimal, one-tenth. You can also think about it like money, though. It still makes sense. If ten people share one dollar, each person is going to get one dime, and one dime is equal to ten hundredths, which is the same as one-tenth. Here you can see that the um, flat is divided into ten pieces, and we call one piece a tenth. And each of these, you can just think about how we read them in decimals and fractions. Three-tenths, the fraction, reads the same as three-tenths, the decimal. Nine-tenths, nine-tenths. One and seven-tenths, we read it the exact same way in a decimal. One and seven-tenths. Next, let's think about one-fifth. The fraction one fifth is the, is two equal to two tenths. The easiest way that I think to think about one fifth is to change it into tenths, an equivalent fraction that's written in tenths. So I've done that here. One fifth multiplied by the one whole fraction two halves becomes two tenths, which is then an easy fraction to hear and write as the decimal two tenths. There, you can also think about it like money, though. If you think about five people sharing a dollar, each person would get two dimes, which is equal to 20 cents or two tenths. Here in the flat, we can see that the flat has been divided into five pieces, one, two, three, four, five, to represent fifths. And then one of those fifths is equivalent to two tenths or two rods. So down here we can see two fifths would be two times the amount of one fifth, two tenths, for a product of four tenths, but you can also change it into tenths. Two fifths multiplied by a one whole fraction gives you four tenths as an equivalent fraction. So four tenths the fraction we can easily write as four tenths the decimal. Here I change this one into tenths as well. One and four fifths by multiplying by two halves is one and eight tenths. That's an, those are equivalent fractions. And one and eight tenths, the fraction, you can write as one and eight tenths the decimal. Finally, we have one twelfth, which is written as zero and eighty-three thousandths with the three repeating. Um, there's going to be some fractions that we get to that we can't think about money, but there's really no way to make sense out of it, and the only way to turn it into a decimal is to think about it like a division problem, and I think that twelfth is a good example of that. So one twelfth you can write as one divided by twelve, and in order to solve that, you would want to ask decimal dog to spit up a zero and a decimal, and so now we can think about it like 12 going into 100. But let's go ahead and put our decimal point in the right place. All right, 12 can't go into 1. 12 can't go into 10. But 12 can go into 100 8 times. 8 times 12 is 96. 100 minus 96 is 4. Now I'm not quite done. I don't want to have a remainder, so I'm going to put another zero there, which is still an equivalent decimal. I'm going to bring down that zero. 12 goes into 43 times. 3 times 12 is 36. And I'm going to get 4. And if I continue and continue and continue, I'm just going to keep ending up with 36. 40 minus 36 is 4. So over and over and over, I'm going to get 3's in this decimal. The, we shorten that like this. We show just the part that's repeating with a line over it like this. So this decimal over here, you can see in the hundreds grid that it's showing eight hundredths here, and then a third, basically, of one more hundredth. So um, three pieces of this one if we broke it up into 10 pieces. If we wanted to make sure that that makes sense, we could do it this way. One twelfth we know is less than one tenth because it's Small, a bigger denominator means a smaller piece. 
So 1 12 should be a little bit less than the decimal equivalent of this. And th that is true. This is a little bit less than 1 tenth. So if we have another twelfth, um, another fraction with 12 as the denominator, 7 twelfths, we can figure out its equivalent decimal by doing the division problem 7 divided by 12. And I got 0 and 583 thousandths with the 3 repeating. And to check it to make sure that it makes sense, I know that 7 twelfths is a little bit bigger than 1 half because 6 twelfths would be 1 half. So 7 twelfths should be just a little bit bigger than 5 tenths which it is. This is a little bit bigger than 5 tenths. So you can use this division problem for twelfths, but you can also use it for any other fraction that you come up on that you don't know its equivalent decimal.